It's brother Jason Yarrow, the kid who had to sign off, and everybody out there. We've got a really cool story about a California bill that is upcoming that is set to legalize psychedelic services, and they've been adding some amendments to it in committees uh, ahead of an expected vote next month. A partisan bill to legalize psychedelic service centers in California has been amended in a number of different ways. Supporters prepare for an, unexpe- for an expected committee hearing next month. Regulated Therapeutic Access to Psychedelics Act, which would allow adults 21 and older to uh, access psilocybin, MDMA, mescaline, and DMT in a supervised environment with trained facilitators, has undergone a series of mostly technical changes as well as certain key regulatory revisions. Sponsored by Senator Scott Weiner and Assemblymember Marie Waldron, the legislation has been drafted in a way that's meant to be responsive to concerns voiced by old Governor Gavin last year when he vetoed a broader proposal that included provisions to legalize low-level possession of substances such as psilocybin. Among the main changes to the bill that were adopted last week is new language to establish a Division of Regulated Psychedelic Therapy under the California Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency would be specifically tasked with regulating the psychedelics program. The measure was also amended to create a board of regulated psychedelic facilitators in the State Department of Consumer Affairs to oversee and license trained facilitators to provide the services. The Public Education and Harm Reduction Fund would also be created to support efforts to educate the public about the potential benefits and risks of psychedelics. Under the bill as amended, the governor would be responsible for making appointments to the proposed expert oversight committee. The legislation was also revised to clarify that psychedelics covered under the measure could only be used in the context of a regulated facilitation at approved locations. Other mostly technical changes included clarifications around data collection requirements, definitional changes, the removal of duplicative language, and uh, facilitator enforcement provisions. Main difference in the overall legislation is compared to the bill that the governor vetoed last year that the earlier proposal sought to remove criminal pen- penalties for psychedelics possession outside of the regulated service con. That said, the current measure does not lay out any specific qualifying medical conditions that a person must have in order to access the services. Weiner told Marijuana, Marijuana Moment last week that he still expects the bill will receive consideration in a committee hearing next month. It's been referred to three separate panels. Meanwhile, Waldron, the lead on the assembly side, is sponsoring a separate psychedelics bill focused on promoting research and creating a framework for the possibility regulated therapeutic access that has already moved through the assembly this year with unanimous support. Uh, to me, this is just a real great movement in the right direction. Access to psychedelics is a good thing for our communities. And I'm excited to see this thing making its way through committee. Uh, a little bit of a bummer that uh, low-level psychedelic um, uh, 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 targeting has still not been taken off the table. However, for most people with... with uh, an abundance of traumas, a low level of education about psychedelics probably is better for them to have a facilitated experience for maybe their first experience. And what do you, Yara, what do you and Jason think about this, uh, this story? I, I just feel like these, they, like once this passes, then everyone's going to start opening up, you know, like they started opening up the ketamine clinics. They're going to start opening yeah. up the fun guy clinics. And then, so then that way they can say that they're giving this type of an experience, but even people that just have no, no uh no schooling in how to do that or or past experience in doing that you know what i mean you know what i mean uh, i'm sure there's going to be a rush of of yeah. of people to to come in and that's kind of how the business space works though you know as everybody gets an opportunity to do so it's called uh, find a need and fill it right and there and, you go and so here's the thing right when we're talking about psychedelics things that could make you see things things that might lead to judgment that might not be so safe and sustainable. The idea that you would have a trained facilitator or guide is sound policy, it's practical applications, and it's consistent with the way in which indigenous communities took psychedelic plant medicines going back thousands of years. Nobody just took a heroic dose and went off into the woods. People had guides, they had people who were experienced in these things who were making sure that they were going through the process in a way that was safe and sane and sensible. So the idea that we would do that, to me, doesn't seem like it's uh, cutting edge. It just seems like we're saying, okay, we want to decriminalize these people to be able to take these psychological, spiritual journeys. And we want to make sure it that they're not climbing the top of the bridge and thinking like a swan. So I love all of this, and I make money on 
begin cutting related industry and it's up it's just whatever abilities operate us whatever margin the we also just get we're mi we're missing you Yarrow. yeah yeah we're getting like every other word from well, you, Yarrow. we're getting a short on your mic i'm sorry because yeah. you're making great points can, can you hear but, me now yeah, yeah, can you hear me that's now better, that's much better yeah so so what i'm trying to say is that what cost is to to facilitate these i just want to make sure that as we are thinking about plant medicine and adopting ways for people to evolve and shift their thinking consciousness that while these facilities are going to be likely be very expensive it's also important to think about low cost people who might not have thousands and thousands of dollars I just want to make sure that as we, that it isn't just for the well-to-do, that it isn't just for the rich, it isn't just for certain tax brackets. And so if they charge a lot of money for these facilities, I would just hope that they allocate like some scholarship type model so that other people can also go to these new facilities and back from the treatment. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, and they are going to have a policy, uh, a regulatory body to uh, certify folks would be facilitators so there will be some sort of there will be some sort of of of, of regulatory uh, criteria so maybe that you know that'll lead to both better experiences as well as not just anyone at all rushing in case i would also hope that they would use some sort of uh psychologist on on the board or on the uh, staff of each, mm -hmm. uh, uh, each of these businesses in order to just protect the mental health of, of folks who are doing it um, and, and going back to the fact that maps uh, as well as the ketamine clinics and all these different modalities that are that are that are emerging are all charging thousands and thousands of dollars for the treatment uh, while i don't agree with that as a model this points to the that sore spot that is our current system you know we live in a system that is designed to aggregate wealth in hands as possible and, and is uh, designed also to cater to the rich and and uh as well as providing prejudice to the the not so well to do so really continue every every one of these stories that we see continues to point to the same thing which is that the system that we're enmeshed in is not actually working and functioning for the vast majority of people and we really need to get back to the drawing board on this somehow mm. is that going to happen ever don't know no I, I i doubt it i doubt it i doubt it but on that we're going to go to a commercial we're going to be right back thank you so much for that matthew 